Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran and welcome to the day five, the final day of the AAA webinar to success for exams in December 2023. Let's take a look at the agenda of the final day. Now, the agenda of the final day is to look at the professional marks because they are extremely important. And to me, this is a differentiator between passing and failing the AAA paper, particularly for students who flunk into late 40s in the AAA paper. How seriously you take professional marks and what you do uh, for grabbing 20 professional marks when you're practicing at home before the actual exam. Is there any easy methodology which could be adopted for 20 professional marks? That's uh, what I will be discussing on the fifth and the final day, at least to improve upon the prospects of how you understand them and how you can gain most of them. So this is the day five, the final day, and the agenda of it is to focus on 20 professional marks and your aim is to gain most of them. Let's see, is that possible and it can easily be done. Now, when you look at the professional skills in the AAA paper, there are four professional skills in the AAA paper. The first being communication, then analysis and evaluation, then professional skepticism and judgment. And the final one is the commercial acumen. The first one you can see is in black, which is something odd because that is only examinable in the question number one of the AAA paper. You will only find communication in the question number one and that is connected with the briefing note. You're writing a briefing note in the question number one. So that skill is only found in the question number one. The question number one will consist of all the four skills uh, on your screen. So question number one will have communication skill, analysis and evaluation skill, professional skepticism and judgment and commercial acumen. When you go to the section B of the paper, and when you look at the question number two and three, where you have five professional marks for each of the question, you will only find three skills over there, analysis and evaluation, professional skepticism and judgment, and commercial acumen. Because communication is a unique skill, which will only be found in the question number one by virtue of you writing an answer in a briefing note format. So we'll see the specific marks allocation for communication skills, and we'll see what rest can be done for grabbing marks either in question one or two for analysis and evaluation, skepticism and judgment and commercial acumen. Okay, in the first question, 10 marks uh, are for professional, uh, 10 marks are for professional skills. Out of those 10 marks in the question number one, which are for professional skills, three marks are allocated to communication. So 10 minus three is equal to seven. The seven is for the rest of the skills like commercial acumen, analysis and evaluation and skepticism and judgment. But three is for communication. And to me, uh, these three marks here, you should score 100%. You should not lose a single of the three marks here. These are important three marks. Let's see what can be done in a systematic way to fetch these three good marks on communication skill. Number one, briefing note format and structure. I guided you about the briefing note format and structure on the day three, starting with the heading briefing note to from date subject, writing the introduction. In the first part, you had the business risk you wrote business first, then you put the materiality heading, then you write the risk of material misstatement answer, then you write the C part, and then you write the D part. Uh, even after the risk of material misstatement, we give a conclusion uh, defining uh, the basis of our significant risk of material misstatement. The structure was laid on day three. So a briefing note, format and structure. Can you fetching one of that mark? So use headings and subheadings and an introduction. So every time you write a briefing note, start with an introduction. Headings and subheadings. Heading means business risk. Within business risk, you can have subheadings. Risk of material misstatement heading. Within that, you can have subheadings. Ethical issue heading. Under ethical issues, there could be several ethical issues, subheadings. So headings and subheadings is also something which will help you gain those three marks around communication. So you can make a checklist, format, introduction, headings and subheadings. Number two, style, language and clarity. Appropriate layout and tone of the briefing note. Layout means 
A, B, C, D. A briefing note should not be done in a haphazard manner. Lay out means the logical flow, the logical flow of the briefing note. So appropriate layout means you're going in the order of A, B, C, D. And the tone of the briefing note. Uh, you are a manager and you're writing to the partner. So the tone and the jargons and the vocabulary you are using across the uh, briefing note should be uh, should play a crucial part. At least try to use the terminologies which has been used in the case study. Try to use the terminologies which have been used in the requirement so that uh, you can do justice with the tone. Presentation of materiality and relevant calculation. So when you present the materiality and the relevant calculation, I, I shown you that on the day three, how you present the materiality paragraph, how you put the calculations of the materiality paragraph. You have three technical marks for materiality, right? Beside the three technical marks you have for materiality, you're also fetching professional marks for that as part of communication. So presentation, how you present the materiality in a proper paragraph with a proper heading. So presentation of materiality itself is very, very important for communication skill marks. Appropriate use of the CBE tools. Appropriate use of CBE tools. What does that mean? Uh, you can uh, you can do the heading bold. You can underline the heading. Uh, you can underline the subheadings. So you can use the tools like bold, underline, italic. That can really add value to the uh, briefing note uh, because everything will be well bold, well underlined, well segregated. Uh, a, a heading could be bold and an underline. Uh, that is the use of the CBE tools because you normally use them in Microsoft Word when you're writing something on Microsoft Word to make it more impressive, like uh, bold or like underline. So that is very, very important. So your style, your language, and your clarity also plays a crucial part. In terms of that, at least use the CBE tools like bold and italic, or at least uh, do a very proper presentation of materiality under the heading of the paragraph materiality and try to ensure that you have an appropriate layout, A, B, C, D. And the tone has the jargons, at least the jargons used in the case study and the requirements. Number three, effectiveness and clarity of communication. Answer is relevant and tailored to the scenario. Whatever you're writing uh, as part of your briefing note is all linked to the case study. You're not writing something generic from the book, uh, from the knowledge. Whatever you're writing is relatable to what is happening in the case study. So tailored, tailored to the scenario, business risk, audit risk, procedures, ethical issues, tailored to the scenario. And lastly, uh, adherence to the request made by the partner. Whatever request the partner is making, adhere to that. For example, the partner is saying uh, that while, did, uh, while evaluating the risk of material misstatement, you should not consider any risk arising from inventory. So when you're writing the raw answer, you should not write any risk relating to inventory. But if you write it, you're not adhering to the instructions of the partner. Or if the partner is saying that I want you to determine the materiality on profit and you determine materiality on revenue, that is wrong. Or if the partner is saying, use exhibit one and two for identifying the audit risk. And you also use the exhibit three for identifying the audit risk. That is wrong. Adherence. So adherence is also important. If you do all this, you get three marks. What, what is the issue here? Format, headings, subheadings, tone, lay, uh, layout, ABCD, presentation of the materiality. Uh, bold and underline, uh, writing a case specific answer, and at the end of the day, adherence to the partner instruction. Isn't that easier? So I don't want to see any student losing this three crucial marks here, which is for communication confined to the question number one and within the 10 professional marks of the question number one. I hope you do the justice to this this time in December 23 exams. Moving to the other professional skills we have in question number one and elsewhere in the question number two and three, because this is a skill only confined to question one. Question number one, 10 professional marks. Uh, we have analysis and evaluation. Number one, 
risk evaluation because every time the question says evaluate the significant business risk or evaluate and prioritize the significant audit risk so evaluation risk evaluation is effectively prioritized i i shown you how to prioritize uh, in uh, the session on day 3 uh, and I did show you uh, there can be two approaches you can take to prioritization. Either you prioritize uh, on the basis of quantitative materiality from high to low, or you just do an answer anyway, haphazard, wherever uh, in the order you're finding the risk from the scenario. But in the conclusion, you then justify which of the two risks in your list above are significant and why, and give a proper explanation of that justification. So if any student is giving a conclusion for prioritization, or if any student is justifying the prioritization, you're fetching analysis and evaluation marks because evaluate means to conclude. So if you're writing an audit risk answer and you're not giving a conclusion. You're writing a raw answer. You're not giving a conclusion. A conclusion is the basis of your prioritization. You are losing one single mark from your analysis and evaluation. Number two, identification of procedures or actions which address the requirement. Uh, I think we saw that on day three, that examiner was asking for writing uh, procedures on inventory in the June 23 paper, but they, they were not journal inventory procedures. They were in procedures on inventory specific to the scenario where we had finished goods, uh, work in progress, and a bulk purchase of the raw material. And you need to write procedures around the issues given to you in the case study. And I always tell my procedures, uh, sorry, my students, sorry, CASP. A procedure has to be case specific, case specific. A procedure should start with action, like review, discuss. It should have a source, like discuss with management or discuss with finance director, uh, source, or review the board minutes. Board minutes is a source, purpose, why, why, case. So if you're blending your procedures, you're blending your uh, actions with the case study, uh, you are ensuring that you're writing the procedures and actions from the case, not journal procedures you must have wrote learn or journal actions you must have wrote learn. Useless because uh, you might get some technical marks, but not professional marks. And professional marks is a differentiator between passing and failing. So wherever you are analyzing something or you are evaluating something, please ensure that you do give a justification in conclusion of your priorities assigned to the risk and you're writing case relevant actions and procedures. Next, professional skepticism, questioning mind and judgments. Uh, you have to exercise judgments across the AAA paper. Effectively challenge the information supplied and techniques carried out. Challenge management statements, challenge management opinions. If management is telling you about something in the scenario for question number one, uh, we normally don't believe in management. Uh, we take management statements with a skeptical approach. Uh, because the management is the one involved in window drifting. The management is the one involved in fraudulent financial reporting. So if the management is telling you about something, don't just take it as positive or favorable at the first go. Investigate that. Uh, question that. Being skeptical because management could be involved in a risk of management bias to present a favorable picture of the financial statements. Determination and justification of a suitable materiality level. So when you when you justify the suitable materiality level, as we did on the day three, that we choose, uh, it was five to 10% of the profit, right? Uh, and I choose 6% of the profit and I justified why six. So even though I'm getting three technical marks for that materiality paragraph, we just saw in the communication skill that for presenting the materiality, we're getting one mark. And right here in professional skepticism and professional judgment, uh, examiner is looking to reward us one more mark if we have exercised a good judgment uh, and a basis of judgment for why 6% of the profit as I did on the day three. So you are not just fetching technical marks around materiality, you're fetching professional marks around materiality. So please ensure you take that paragraph of materiality very carefully because it's not just about uh, worth three technical marks, it's worth more because you're getting some marks in communication uh, for materiality and you're getting some marks for the justification of the choice of materiality in the, in the skill of professional judgment.
Appropriate application of professional judgment to draw conclusions uh, and make informed decisions about the course of action. For example, you get a question on uh, evaluate the matters uh, to accept a new audit client. Now you need to take a judgment and draw conclusions that whether you should accept or not. You are writing the matter one, two, three, four, but it's not just writing the methods. You have to give a conclusion at the end of the day that whether you are accepting this engagement or not. So giving conclusions, you are even giving conclusion for prioritizing the risk. So wherever you conclude on something, uh, that is also fetching extra marks around prof uh, professional judgment. Identification of possible management bias. Be, be skeptical in a scenario. In a scenario, there could be something uh, around management bias. There could be something around where management is trying to window dress the financial statements to present better results to the shareholder. Try to investigate that from a case study. Commercial acumen. Demonstration of wider commercial awareness applied to the scenario to evaluate the business risk. If you're evaluating a business risk, try to connect a business risk with an impact on a business. Commercial acumen, awareness of the business, that how will this issue affect business profit or how will this issue affect the business reputation? So awareness, commercial awareness means knowing the business knowing that how this problem will affect the given business in the scenario. So a given business could be a fashion industry, could be a business uh, dealing with the uh, pet business, or could be a business dealing with IT. Uh, an examiner will tell you a bit about industry at the start of the scenario and a bit about the characteristics of the industry throughout the scenario. So you will become aware of how this industry works and operates from the information given in. And then when you're writing the impact of the business risk, try to write into the impact, which is linkable to the uh, awareness you have gathered, like how this will, how this issue will impact uh, which area uh, of the business and why. So that's where you're fetching your marks around commercial soundness or commercial awareness. Using the information in the scenario, uh, to evaluate the magnitude and consideration of the risk, commercial acumen. For example, you had a risk of management bias. And uh, because of the risk of management bias, there was some issues that the management seems like involved in manage, uh, seems like involved in a fraudulent financial reporting. There were possible indicators of that in the scenario. So you found this as a risk of management bias and you were you evaluated that risk very well. And you also link that to the numbers like revenue is increasing a lot or profit is increasing a lot. And there were indicators of management involvement in uh, window dressing and biceness. So, and you thought that the rise in revenue and profit is due to that management biceness. Then you talked about the magnitude and consideration of risk. That what can be the likely implications of management being involved in window dressing or management not demonstrating integrity? How will this affect your overall engagement as an auditor? Uh, do you need to be more skeptical when you come to the audit? Or do you need to approach the audit uh, be, uh, with a more skeptical mindset? Uh, will that impact the fees? Will that impact the number of resources you will be taking? Uh, will that be impacting the overall risk profile of the client? Because if the management is not demonstrating integrity or is involved in management bias, it has wider implications on the rest of the audit. Uh, you might need to be more skeptical when you come to the audit. You might need to gather more evidence when you come to the audit because you're not trusting management. So in that case, there could be a commercial acumen that your fees, uh, your fees income will be affected because of bringing more resources and more skepticism into the audit. And you might need to renegotiate the fees with the client. So this sort of things can be written down in the paper to fetch marks around commercial acumen. So I hope you can watch this video, slow down this video, take notes of how you're fetching these marks under the three heads above. One last thing, uh, finding the relevant trends and calculations, analysis and evaluations, finding trends, which I've shown you in the marking scheme on day four, trends and calculations. So wherever you bring the trends and calculations in the answer, you are fetching uh, marks for analysis and evaluation. So try just to brush over this list, try see what what you can do in a more better manner, taking good decisions, uh, 
considering the implication of risk on other factors of audit, like uh, if the management is involved in risk of management buys, how will this affect the great other, the audit uh, coming up? Uh, business risk and its clear impact on business objectives or determination of the materiality, presenting the materiality, uh, lots of things, challenging management statements, uh, writing case specific uh, answers would be better. Okay, uh, the other question, section B. Uh, in section B, we have two questions, right? And each of the question have five uh, professional marks. And these five professional marks are for, again, skepticism and judgment, analysis and evaluation and commercial acumen. You don't have any communication skill marks here. Same formula you got from question number one will be applied to section B questions. That when you're attempting the section B question, uh, be sure that you use the trends or calculations in your answer where possible, that because that will help you fetch most of the professional marks. Comment on materiality where possible in the question two and three. Write case-specific answers, link answer to the case as much as possible because that linkage will fetch you professional marks. Investigate management bias anywhere in question two or three or any indicators of fraudulent activity the management is involved in in the question number two and three. Be skeptical around that and think about the commercial um, like the commercial implication of management bias on the rest of the audit in terms of your fees, income, et cetera. Question management stances, opinions, or claims. Uh, wherever the management is saying something or management is justifying something, don't just take it as something good and positive, uh, particularly the estimates of the management, the fair value of the management, or the accounting treatments of management. Just try to question them because there could be, there should be something wrong in management stances. They're not favorable every time in AAA paper. Finding implication on the issues in the case to the overall audit engagement, fees and commercial acumen. Uh, when you are accepting a new engagement, you have commercial acumen because you need to think about your fees. Uh, if the management is not demonstrating integrity, you need to think about how will this affect my rest of the audit? Uh, how would, should I be approaching the rest of the audit with a greater skepticism? That, that automatically increase your workload and your fees. Uh, you might even be thinking about in a completion question, in a completion question, not in a planning question, right? In a completion question that uh, after the issuance of the report, I should resign as an auditor because the management is not very good and the management is not demonstrating integrity. So this should be my final audit. So I'll issue the report and I step down as an auditor. Itself has a commercial implication that you're losing a client. You're losing the income from the client because you're stepping down because you think the client is not good and you don't want to affect the reputation of your uh, audit firm in the long run. So you step down, you lost the income, but what have you gained? You have gained the reputation of the audit firm. So such mindsets can really be helpful in, in the point number six down. Uh, and all the other five points on your screen. I hope you watch them, you note them, you concentrate on them. I hope the examples I've given you down for analysis uh, and evaluation, skepticism and judgment, particularly the commercial acumen, you will gain most from it and communication in the first question. Materiality again is not just having three technical marks. It has uh, professional marks too. I've shown you materiality, professional marks in uh, professional skepticism and judgment and in communication. And elsewhere in the whole paper, wherever you comment on materiality in question two and three, even from reporting question for audit report question, you're still searching for your professional skepticism and judgment marks around it. So I hope uh, things will improve up for professional skills. Uh, this list on your screen and the list uh, in the previous slides, uh, you can take screenshots and you can make your summaries. Uh, ensure you uh, use it as a checklist when you're practicing at home. And once you start using this as a checklist, uh, a favorable impact would start coming to you in terms of professional marks in the AAA paper. So I hope you will benefit from it and it will contribute largely towards your success uh, in the upcoming exam, particularly the students who fail into late 40s and then uh, fail to investigate why have they failed in. So this was the fifth and the final day of this webinar. I hope the overall webinar, uh, because it's, it was a free content, uh, the purpose was just to give you an outline. Uh, you can still enroll for my premium webinar package by just giving me a message on my WhatsApp number at the bottom of the screen, plus 9233233442. I hope these free webinars would widely uh, be accessible and beneficial for the self-study students. Wish you all the very best of luck. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.